difference between emptiness and space because when you you remember when we were in the Asian exposition uh, underneath here yeah. that you mean in, the, in, in these the little storage. cups we yeah we looked at and mm -hmm. there was also it wasn't the emptiness you talked about that's not emptiness in these cups there are spaces in these cups they are filled although there is nothing well, why it is when you come in yeah, well what happens with Japanese and Asian pottery I guess the best example is that you um, don't know that it's good, but you can feel it is good. So you see five pots, and one pot is by a master potter. Mm -hmm. You don't know. Mm -hmm. They all look the same. Mm -hmm. But somehow you're drawn to one of them, to this one bowl, which is then actually the most expensive, so from the master potter and so on. So um, these objects are no longer inanimate. They are animated by the spirit of the maker. And I think that is the goal of design in the future, is to animate in an animated matter, if ever that even exists. So the whole idea is how do we consider objects to become our pets, our friends, our guardians, you know, our observa observ observers, and how can we yeah, how can we create um, things which are of a higher quality, a more higher spiritual quality, I mean. And so that doesn't need to be uh, religious or anything like that. It means that basically uh, an object could have its own aura. You know, give me your glass. So imagine that you would invest a tremendous amount of energy and research in this object. So you would create, all your energy would be in this object. Then possibly this object will be able to say, buy me, look at me. You don't even have to publicize it or you don't have to package it because it is going to do it itself. Mm. And that is for me, you know, the goal of this century. How, how can we manage when we think about design mm -hmm. or when we think about also the museum where the, all this design is that there is in a way a rhythm or is there a rhythm already that we just have to uh, unfold? Well in the Japanese uh, new installation you really have everything together because you have let's say the masterpieces or well, there's many more pieces in the <laughs> in the storage but I suppose that the, the most amazing pieces are there you have a very strong selection so it's not so much to see but it's you know in itself very powerful and then the way it is installed the landscape in which is in it is installed makes it an experience and it's a very um, avant-garde uh, way of showing this type of matter just to throw some wood on the floor and put the Buddha, I've never seen that before. So that is shockingly interesting and new and exciting. So I'm very excited, I'm close to tears because I'm moved by the mm -hmm. experience. Mm -hmm. And I think that is what you need to uh, obtain. It's not always possible, but somehow you need to install things or bring things to the fore or eliminate all other things so you can actually sort of catch, you know, look only at this, uh, so it can move you. Well, what is so interesting in this space, of course, that it used to be a museum which was there to teach the public, but also to teach students. So it was a, a school as well as a museum, yeah. which is a dream, isn't it? Like in our project, we also would like to attach a sort of cultural place to the school so you could work with the students on projects you could you know take them along to experience things I mean it would be like a playground and a teaching ground a learning ground an exchange ground and now I understand that it it has fallen apart like in the Victorian and Albert like here so that whole idea in the beginning to teach industry, to teach the layman, to teach people what it is, 
I think it's really time to go back to that, strangely enough. So, uh, you have a materi materialistic um, architecture, you have also a social architecture. How, how would, would you make a museum, not only in, in how you put the things to a place, but also how would the infrastructure be? How could people come in, in fact, that they are in a place where also this aspect, not of quantity, but of quality, not that aspect of noise, mm. but of sense, uh, is important. How, how should we do that? How, how, do you have an idea about Well, each time experience? I think it would be different. Um, the focus will be given by uh, the way it's organized, I would say, in mm -hmm. space. Mm -hmm. Whether it's elevated on a pedestal or put on the yeah, floor yeah. or the beautiful um, you know, pedestals um, in the um, jet room, you know, just repeating the floor, you know, the same marble as the floor. I'm very f fond of that sort of stuff. Then um, you elevate without actually showing that you elevate. You just single out. It's about singling out. So how do you single out a parkour, or an object, or a color, or a tactility, which is so important? So in the future we will need um, to have ways to have the public touch. So this is already why you need to use your archives and just well to have a few of them broken, because people need to touch. We cannot continue, I think, to do this without feeding the fingers, only feeding the eyes and the brain. And then there can be, you know, there can be sound, there can be light, there can be... But it's also in... in because uh, when you say that touch, uh, you can touch with your hands, but you also can touch with your mind or your senses. And maybe that the whole concept but of... But the frustration of the public not to be able to touch when the MoMA did the first exhibition where there was a sort of touch tables, I mean, People Were in Heaven was the, one of the most successful ever. Paula Antonelli, she, mm. she, she, she just decided to bring the material to people. So she, did, she asked the designers to make extra material so people could actually. So to put a, away the noise and to get more quality this, and to focus on that the tactility. the tactility is a very important part in your uh, experience or sense. At this point, yes, yeah. because we have so many screens, so we need to compensate. And uh, there will be more screens, so we need to compensate more. So that's why all designers, all architects, everybody is just talking about structure and uh, surface, surface effects, tactility and so on. I, I sometimes have the feeling that we live in a, in, a, in a society in which you have to touch everything. I don't want to touch everything. I want to be touched and I... Um, and, and, and sometimes it's uh, very difficult. It's, 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 it's something very uh, nuanced, or, or how do you call it, which, uh, which is forgotten. And, and it has something to do with this third space, where you come in and go out. Now that we start on this project Soul, which is another way to say spiritual, much more easy to grasp for young people, so, um, which stands for School of Universal Learning, um, we are going to go into this whole matter, I think, because we will be confronted while we script the uh, curriculum and we work with round tables with others to see, you know, what does that mean, universal learning? What do you really, what are the ingredients of universal learning? And how do we give, how do we make sense of it, especially? So, I think this relates to this museum function also, the museum as, you know, the museum as a place to learn. And you explained me that you always think of this cathedral schools, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Like as a starting point as well. 
Yeah, that starts from the idea that, in a way, uh, you know, museums are places of beauty, traditionally are places of beauty, and uh, universities are places of truth. Uh, are they? Tra no, well, traditionally. Traditional, yeah. They should be. Yeah. Uh, and, we agree. Uh, society is the place of um, morality, should be. When it is good that you have a society, place of morality, university, place of truth, in a, a and in a museum, a place of beauty. But when you read all the big philosophers, they all say, and from the Greek on, they all say that in fact, goodness, beauty, and morality, I mean, a, a good, so morality, beauty, and truth, are one and the same. So we need the bad and the ugly as well. It is, it is one and the same. Mm -hmm. And so now on a certain level of um, uh, awareness, mm -hmm. they become one. On a certain level of awareness, they are separate things. They are techniques. It's a technique of morality, a technique of beauty, a technique of truth. Yeah, and that's what, what universities have become, what museums have become, what society has become. It's a technique of morality or a technique of beauty. For me, it's and all a question of respect. And, and where know, we respect are working. Respect for the other, respect for, this, for the environment, respect for yourself. It starts no, there. No, or, or it is the result that when, when in a way, people work, work on their level of awareness, or their the level, level of concentration, or the level of a higher form of an intelligence in themselves, mm -hmm. that uh, this normal, for me, normal way of studying, of being a scholar in life, in a way, and learning from everything you see, mm -hmm. then on a, on a certain level, this truth and beauty and, and morality come together. Mm. The school of, um, of learning which we are working on mm. should be a school, in my opinion, um, in which these three things not are techniques anymore, but come together. Listen, this was um, a young artist on stage in um, Cape Town in the Indaba conference. Her name is Kila Philander, already a very nice name, Philandering girl. And she stood on the stage with this big Afro, beautiful girl. First she said a poem and then she said, the major design tool in my life is empathy. Mm -hmm. That's what it's all about. We don't need anything more. It's empathy with the other, empathy with the space in between the things. Empathy with the tactility, empathy with the public. And yeah, I think this is where we will go in the future. Yeah, and then about this, how, how this um, a, a kind of, is it an institute or is it a movement or is it the care. way of thinking? It should be everything at the same time, no? I think that a museum also should go outside. I think there should be a market. I think there should be events. I think there should be not entertainment. It has to be in relation to what you are doing, to your core. But um, or is it so that every you good need to go to people also? I think. Yeah, and every good university should be a museum, and every good museum should and be a university because it's all the same at a certain level. 